So the end of the Nintendo Switch era is looking more interesting than ever. And when I say the end of the Switch era, I don't mean that Nintendo is going to stop supporting this platform with any kind of game content and that they won't continue to release games on this thing for years to come. But I do think that many online can agree that we have probably seen our last exclusively Nintendo Switch focused direct presentation in the sense that by the time we see their next presentation, we will have officially learned about the Nintendo Switch 2, as it is now looking more likely than ever that yes, that partner direct and indie world showcase combined that was moved up to towards the end of August was probably our last look at exclusively a Switch focused presentation. And we should likely be learning about the successor console in the upcoming weeks or months, probably no later than October. There is a lot of writing on the wall for that, but that is not what this video is about. I actually want to talk about that with the mindset that we have no more directs to look forward to because I personally do not believe we will get one in the month of September. Nintendo does not do one in October. They don't do one over the holiday season. We shouldn't see one till February. I'm confident we will have at least the first look trailer and the official announcement of their successor hardware by that point in time. That means from a first party published Nintendo software perspective, the games we know about today could indeed be the end of the big focus for the Nintendo Switch as a whole. Because while I do believe some simpler projects will continue to be ported and remastered and released on Nintendo Switch, I do think that when it comes to the Metroid Prime 4s and Pokemon Legends ZAs of the world, the bigger scope projects that going forward outside of those two 2025 first party published games, there will probably not be a lot of blockbuster level support for the Switch 1 in terms of new software. So I want to look at the existing software that has been announced and confirmed for the rest of 2024 in addition to some games that have been announced for 2025 and some TBA dates that they have the year 2025, but we don't know what month to announce them and talk about if this is indeed the end of the Nintendo Switch era when it comes to big new first party Nintendo releases. How do we feel about it on the note that Nintendo is ending this incredible generation on? So hopefully we come to that consensus together. Before we do, make sure you like, subscribe, and turn on your bell notification to join Summer Nation if you're new here. And we have to first talk about my favorite franchise from Nintendo, which is none other than The Legend of Zelda. And we do have a fresh release with The Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom out on September 26th. That is this month at the time of filming this video. Legitimately not that far away. We also, of course, have a new Switch Lite edition, the Hyrule edition, launching with this. And my God, every single trailer we've seen for this game has just sold me on it that much more. Nintendo has shown us roughly 15 minutes of footage from this game themselves, explaining all of the different gameplay mechanics. They've even had all their previews go live, and just the general public was able to play a roughly a 15 minute demo of this game at PAX West. So they've done a lot in terms of ramping up the marketing for it. It's very exciting to see. Yes, you're playing as Princess Zelda this time around with the tri rod, and she's going to be able to summon a number of different things. We learned about sword fighter mode recently. So yes, it will feel like you're playing with Link a fraction of the time. It is a very limited mode that you can do that. We also know that there is horseback travel, and this seems to be, in my opinion, a perfect marriage of the Tears of the Kingdom and Breath of the Wild era Zelda games merged in with that traditional top-down 2D linear progression Zelda title and will hopefully create a best of both worlds scenario where many players are excited to go traverse through all of these dungeons and the mixture of the overworld and the still world beneath like there's a lot of exciting story implications and gameplay ideas that will no doubt come from this game so that is out September 26th and this one is probably going to be the biggest game of 2024 from first party Nintendo for me personally. October 17th 2024 we'll see the release of Super Mario Party Jamboree. I have been following this game and talking about it a lot on the channel here recently and I've also become more excited the more that I see and learn about this Super Mario Party game. Mario Party is a franchise I've had a love-hate relationship with over the years because while they're some of my favorite games on like the N64 and game GameCube era, I kind of fell out of love with the franchise over the Wii and Wii U era, and then in the beginning of the Switch era, really was not that big of a fan of Super Mario Party, but I fell back in love with it on Mario Party Superstars, which was largely a remake and reimagining of your classic era Mario Party games, but just looking modern with a fresh coat of paint, and they had more of a focus on button control style mini games, which is what I really prefer. Well, Super Mario Party Jamboree does have a mixture of the best of both worlds, so now you do have some motion style games when you're playing with the Joy-Cons, you can also play the this game exclusively with the pro controller and stick to only the button style mini games. There's a giant character roster with over 22 playable characters, including Pauline and Ninji as newcomers this time around. A 20 player racing online battle royale mode with Koopathlon, which seems really fun and a unique idea. Bowser's Kaboom Squad will actually have eight player co-op supported. So some really cool new online gameplay ideas. 
seems to be a ton of content over 110 plus different mini games with seven different boards as well with a couple from the n64 era returning and five brand new ones and it seems that everybody who's got direct hands-on time with this game agrees that it's the best looking the most fine-tuned and most exciting mario party game from nintendo in potentially the last 15 to 20 years which is really saying something so i cannot wait for super mario party jamboree personally and it is out october 17th mario and luigi brothership is out on november 7th and this is a very exciting long long overdue return to the Mario and Luigi franchise as it's been over nine years since we've seen a fresh installment in this fan beloved series. Mario RPG games have gotten a ton of love towards the end of the Nintendo Switch's life cycle as we've seen Super Mario RPG and SNES era remake for the Nintendo Switch. We then got a remake of Thousand Year Door, a fan beloved, probably the best Paper Mario game ever in the franchise from the GameCube era brought back earlier in the year of 2024. And now we're going out with a bang in November of 2024 with Mario and Luigi Brothership. There hasn't been quite as an extensive look at this game yet like there has with Jamboree and Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, but Nintendo has been promoting it, creating some Japanese promotional websites to feature the game. We've also seen a number of gameplay snippets that were not seen in previous trailers, and everything about this just looks like some Mario RPG goodness with a little bit of a new depth of mechanic with Luigi being added into the battle because Mario and Luigi can go back and forth and essentially do brother attacks, which are going to be significantly more powerful and it is something that you have to worry about keeping both your players alive because if one of the brothers is dead, it will not hit with the same level of impact as it would if you were both alive. So nice little extra gameplay mechanic buried in there. The game is themed around islands and traversing different unique islands that all have kind of a theme behind them and a story going on with the locals that you will uncover as you continue to traverse the islands. There's a classical gang of bad guys that you're going to continue to run into as you traverse these different islands and will no doubt lead into a more broad story, but this is a fresh entry in the Mario and Luigi franchise and a great pick to kind of close out the end of 2024 for the Nintendo Switch's software lineup, and this will once again be out on November 7th this year. Donkey Kong Country Returns HD will be launching on January 16th, 2025. This is the only 2025 first party Nintendo Switch game that we actually have an official release date for, and we will likely not learn about the other games on this roadmap until after the next February time Nintendo Direct is when I'm expecting them to hold one, but nonetheless, this is a Wii 3DS era Donkey Kong classic game getting an HD remake on the Nintendo Switch. I guess you could say it's more of a simple port or HD remaster project. There's definitely some controversy online about it being sold at that $60 full retail, considering that this was 40 on the 3DS and 50 on the Wii. But I am very much a Donkey Kong Country fan through and through all the way from the classics on the SNES to the Wii and then Wii U era games. And it's going to be cool to have yet another one playable on the Nintendo Switch. Technically, all of them, if you have an NSO subscription, are now playable on one console. We have been missing this one. I'm still way more ready to see what Nintendo has up their sleeves next with the next fresh DK game as technically DK has skipped the Switch's generation from the looks of things in terms of a fresh installment. Tropical Freeze was a port from the Wii U. Now we're getting this remaster from the Wii and 3DS era. So yes, indeed, we have skipped Donkey Kong in the most successful generation on Nintendo's own record. But I do think that they have something big up their sleeves for DK when we talk about the transition to their next gen hardware. This one, you kind of know what you're getting into just when you look at the gameplay. It is a top tier 2D action adventure platformer. There will be a lot of die and try again you progress through certain levels you find hidden items within the levels if you're trying to go for that 100 completionist run and then you're going to fight some very fun and certain times very challenging boss fights towards the end of the area of each map Price and controversy aside, I will be personally picking this one up and adding it into my Switch collection on January 16th next year. Pokemon Legends ZA is officially slated for a 2025 release. However, we have not seen any official gameplay of this game just yet, and we also have some reason to believe it will not launch in the early part of 2025 like many were expecting because we saw Legends Arceus launch in the month of January. A lot of people pegged Legends ZA to be an obvious slide-in pick for the early type of year Pokemon game that we sometimes see Game Freak release, but I've talked about this on the channel and it seems that Game Freak and the Pokemon company are finally taking a different approach with their mainline Pokemon games and taking quite a bit more time, love, and care with the development of them, especially after all of the backlash that we saw around Scarlet and Violet and the release date of those games. 
Yes, they sold excellent, but Nintendo had to release patch after patch and even apologize for the game's performance at launch. And there seems to be some pretty reliable information that if you line up what Pokemon is doing with their trading card game and the release schedule for that in 2025, the Legend ZA won't even be a first half of 2025 game, so rather, I think we will learn more about this in the year of 2025, probably at the February Pokemon Presents, in terms of maybe seeing the first gameplay and a release date for the game, and I would actually be willing to bet that it is more of a fall or potentially even holiday 2025 title. That all remains to be seen, but Pokemon Legend ZA will be a very exciting follow-up to Legends Arceus, which is honestly my favorite Pokemon game hands down period from a gameplay perspective, because I just really enjoyed all the new mechanics the dodge roll ability, being able to be damaged by Pokemon directly in the overworld, the seamless transitions into battle, and just how you could sneak around and catch Pokemon in real time. It felt like the right direction for the franchise to go, and I hope that we see this new installment in the Legends franchise even take things that much further. So this is a very exciting one for me, and will be out at some point in 2025. Finally, we close out this list with Metroid Prime 4 Beyond, the last 2025 game that we know to expect for Nintendo Switch at this point in time from a first-party published perspective. I do believe there will be more games announced than this for the Switch era, but this is what we know about right now, and it seems like it is all we will know about walking into the successor reveal for Nintendo's next-gen hardware. So with that in mind, Metroid Prime 4 Beyond actually has a lot riding on its shoulders because we know historically the Metroid franchise has not performed that well from a sales perspective, but it has such a hardcore fan following and Nintendo does seem to want to elevate it to a new level. So it remains to be seen if they can do that to a more broad market appeal than what they've done with other games because we've seen the Legend of Zelda franchise while it was already big for Nintendo, essentially double to triple in its growth in the Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom era for Zelda games. Could this be that big moment for Metroid. And that first gameplay trailer that we got for this at the June Nintendo Direct did a lot for Metroid fans, and I don't know if it did a lot for the broader appeal of this game, but I do think Nintendo is going to give this the best marketing push and the best foot forward that they can for any Metroid installment so far, and it very much looks like the sequel to Metroid Prime 3. This looks like it is right in this Prime series, and we need to get 2 and 3 released before 4 is ultimately out. I do think that's going to happen. I think that it could be something like a shadow drop announcement at a February Direct, and we will learn about maybe Metroid Prime 4 Beyond as the summer title for Nintendo next year in 2025. It could be later than that, but it could also come out in the middle of the year or towards the back half of the year. But regardless, we know that after the super long wait, literally a 2017 announcement, then a 2019 follow up with a full reboot on the game because Nintendo had to scrap the direction of that it was going that weren't necessarily happy with it. This game's been a long time coming, so we cannot wait as Metroid fans to finally play through Prime 4 Beyond. And it is exciting that it's getting so close here. And everything that I've seen from the game so far from a gameplay perspective in that first look trailer just has me more excited than ever to actually get my hands on it and play through it firsthand. And I do believe this will also be a game that will have have a Nintendo Switch 2 version ready to go at launch, and it will be something of a cross-generational release, not necessarily at the launch of the Switch 2s, but rather like at the launch of Prime 4 when that comes out, I think the Switch 2 will already be out and available on the shelves, and we will get a Switch 1 version of this game. We will likely also get a Switch 2 version that does have better frame rate and some more enhanced visuals, and I think that's going to be a very exciting thing for Metroid fans when it ultimately comes out. So what do you guys think about the software lineup of the current family of Nintendo Switch systems when we talk about the end of a legendary generation for Nintendo? Are you happy to see it go out on this note? Do you think like I do, that yeah, we're done with major first-party Nintendo Switch announcements outside of future directs likely happening next year as soon as February, and sure, there's going to be some support for the Switch, but it won't be the big Mario, Zeldas, and Metroids of the world going forward, but rather, Nintendo will start to shift a lot of their support to the next-gen successor console, or do you think that I'm off here and that we actually will have quite a bit of a long roadmap of software coming out on the current Nintendo Switch before we can talk about the transition? to their next-gen hardware. And if this is all we're getting for towards the end of the Switch era life cycle, are you excited with what we have coming down the pipeline or is there more to be desired for you personally? So make sure you share all your thoughts and feelings in the comments down below before you leave, regardless if we agree or disagree. Also make sure you like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell. And with that, I've been Sunbro, you've been Nation. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.